Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the backward Kolmogorov equation for discrete Markov chains. So given a Markov chain, oh, just stop. x0, x1, all the way down to xn forever, there's my Markov chain, over a state space, oh. I'm just going to do 1 to n, Then let's consider a vector un, who, a column vector un whose ith entry is the expected value of some function f of xn, given that x0 is equal to i. Okay. I'm going to think of this as a column vector in the i variable. So this is a column vector. I have like a u, u1 n u n that's the last possible state for i n and there's my column vector u okay so this is the vector u n okay a column vector i want to develop a recursion relationship for this column vector so i need to put some initial conditions on this i'm going to assume that u 0 i is just the given function it's just going to be f of i so that's going to be my setup over here from my recursion. So now let's build it. So how do we compute the n plus first term in this series? So if I look at u, I look at u n plus one, i, what is this? This is just the expected value of f of x n plus one, given that x zero is equal to i. Okay, so what is this? This is just the sum over j, j goes from 1 up to n over the state space of f of j times the probability that xn plus 1 is equal to j, given that x0 is equal to i. Okay, that's how we compute uh, conditional expected values. All right, excellent. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to condition this now on x1 being equal to k, right? So this is going to be the sum. I'm going, to draw, I'm going to suppress the 1 to n. I'm just going to say it's the sum over j. j goes from 1 to n. The sum over k. k goes from 1 to n. Of fj. Of fj. Then the probability that xn plus 1 is equal to j. Given that x1 is equal to k. And, of course, x0 is equal to i. But, I don't, but now, here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, there's technically going to have to be what here? I technically also need to say, and also, x0 is equal to i. But that information is no longer needed because it's a Markov process. So over here, I'm using the fact that the process is Markov, right? It's a Markov process or Markov chain, okay? And then times what? It's times the probability that x1 is equal to k, given that x0 is equal to i. All right, excellent. So now let's think about what this is. So now this, of course, is just p i to k, okay? So this is gonna be the sum. And then what's this thing get, gonna be over here? Well, now um, I'm just gonna, re this, of course, I'm gonna use the Markov property again and shift that now, okay? So if I use the Markov property to shift that, what's this gonna be? This is the sum over j, the sum over k, f of j. And now notice that going from 1 to n plus 1 is n steps, so by time homogeneity, so we have to assume over here, I'm going to assume it's time homogeneous as well. Time homogeneous. This is going to be the probability that xn is equal to j, given that x0 is equal to k. Times, of course, this is just going to be p going from i to k. P, i, k. Great. Now, of course, what do we have over here? Let's finally switch the limits of summation. So I'm going to flip the limits of summation. I'm going to first sum over j, then k. So I'm going to sum over k last and j first. Now, by switching the index of summation, I can do this because they're finite sums. If they're infinite sums, I have to be much more careful with this. And then I'm going to have an fj. And then the probability that xn is equal to j, given that x0 uh, is equal to k, and then pik. Great. Now let's examine this innermost sum over here. 
This innermost sum is exactly what? This innermost sum is just going to be the what? It's just going to be u sub n k. So this term over here is exactly just the kth entry of u n. Okay? So what this is, is this is now equal to the sum over k, u k n. And then this is going to be a p i k. And so what this is, this is the exactly equal to just the i entry. So this is just going to be p applied to un, the i th entry of this. Okay? That's the, now this is the backward Kolmogorov equation. So now in general, what we've just shown in general for every i, this tells me that un plus 1 is equal to the transition matrix p un. And this is called the backward Kolmogorov equation. So this is backward Kolmogorov. Okay. And the backward Kolmogorov equation is used in a lot of applications because what we're asking you is we're asking you to find the expected value of some terminal payout given some initial condition. So this is like an expected value of a terminal value problem. That's why it's called the backward Kolmogorov equations. Thank you very much.